What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'll be showing you guys how to make a simulation for a cantilever beam that has a concentrated load on the free end of the beam. This is a super easy simulation to do, so let's get right into it. So the first thing that we're going to want to do for the simulation, obviously, is load up ANSYS Workbench. Upon doing so, you should be greeted by a screen that looks similar to this. On your left-hand side here, you have all of your analysis systems. And for the simulation, we are going to be choosing the static structural module. So we can go ahead and drag that into our project schematic. For this simulation, uh, we are going to keep the structural steel as the default material uh, for the simulation of our beam. But say we want to add a different material to our project, we can go ahead and double click on the engineering data up here. And this will open up a second tab on the top here. So we have our project tab where all of our modules are. And we have the engineering data tab where we could add uh, certain materials to that specific project. So in order to add a material, we go ahead and click on engineering data sources. And these are all the different libraries uh, that ANSYS has pre-installed uh, that all each have different materials. Uh, we can go ahead, if we want to add aluminum alloy to our project, we would go ahead and press on the plus sign right here. And we know it's been added to our project when we see the little purple book appear here. For our simulation, uh, we're just going to use the standard structural steel, the default material. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our geometry. So we're going to go back to our project tab and we're going to double click on geometry. And as we can see down here, it says starting space claim. So once that opens, we will build our geometry. Now that space claim is open, we can go ahead and build our geometry. The geometry for the simulation is relatively simple. It is a beam that has a square cross section whose sides are 50 millimeters and whose length is 250 millimeters. So we can go ahead and build that. What we're going to do for this particular simulation is we're going to build uh, the facade of, of the beam and in the modeling of the beam, when we add our boundary conditions in our mesh, uh, that's when we're going to give it uh, its thickness. So we're going to just build the 2D uh, side of it. So we can go ahead and press on our rectangle up here, and we're going to connect it to the origin and drag it out. And we can add our dimensions of 50. If we press tab, it will jump to the other dimension and we'll add 250 for that one. To exit sketcher we press on the uh, green square down here and now we have our surface uh, for our geometry uh, again when we move on to mechanical that is when we'll add the thickness uh, to this surface so in order to go back to the ANSYS workbench we're going to go ahead and press the big x at the top for space climb up here and we can tell that our geometry has been loaded because now we have a check mark beside geometry. So now we're going to move on to the modeling, uh, the meshing, and the boundary conditions. So we're going to go ahead and double click on model. And as we can see here, it says starting up mechanical. So we're going to wait for that to happen. Upon loading mechanical, uh, we should be greeted by a screen that looks similar to this that has our uh, geometry that we just built in the center here. The first thing that we're going to want to do is check out our geometry because there is a question mark beside it, as we can see in the tree. So if we go ahead and press on our geometry, we can see that there is a box that is highlighted yellow. So this is a missing parameter that ANSYS wants us to fill in. And as I mentioned before, since we have a surface, uh, we are going to give that surface some thickness in order to get our 3D object that we want to get. So I'm going to give it a thickness of 50 millimeters to stay to give uh, to get that square cross section for the beam. The next thing that we could do is if we wanted to change the material assignment to our beam, we could go down here to assignment and we can click on structural steel and we see a little triangle appear here. So we could press on that. And as we can see, it lists all of the uh, materials that we added to our particular project before I only added aluminum alloy. And if I wanted to do the analysis on aluminum alloy, I would just go ahead and press on an aluminum alloy like that. And it changes the material assignment to aluminum. I'm going to change it back to structural steel just for th this particular simulation. The next thing that we're going to want to do for the simulation is uh, determine our mesh uh, for this particular geometry. So in order for default to make the default mesh, we can go ahead here and right click on mesh and then go down to generate mesh. And by default, ANSYS will generate a mesh for us. As you can see, the program has added the thickness to the beam to give us our cross section for our geometry. 
As we can see, the mesh that was automatically generated by Ansys is fairly coarse. So if we wanted to refine the mesh and make the elements smaller, we can go ahead and do that. In order to do that, what we're going to do is right click on mesh over here, go to insert and press on sizing. As we can see here, the two yellow boxes indicate uh, what Ansys needs, needs us to specify. The first thing is the uh, geometry. So we're going to go ahead here and press on the body selecting tool. And we can go ahead and select our body and go here and press apply. So we can see that the uh, sizing has been applied to our geometry here. The other thing that we're going to want to do is specify our element size. So we can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to just give it a size of 10 millimeters, just for example. And now that all of our parameters have been added, we can go ahead to mesh, right click on mesh and press on update mesh. And as a result, we can see that the mesh has updated. Now the mesh doesn't look that much more refined than it was before. And that's because I chose 10 millimeters as my uh, element size and before it was something like 14 millimeters so it's not that much more refined but if I wanted to make it smaller I could go ahead and do that I could go here and instead of 10 millimeters I could put five and I could go to update mesh again and it will take a second because it's going to load a lot more elements now and as we can see now our mesh uh, for our geometry is a lot more defined than it was before so that element sizing is a very powerful tool in order to uh, refine the mesh with our mesh generated for our geometry uh, it's always a good idea in order to check the mesh quality in in order to check uh, the skewness of our elements to see if any errors might occur because uh, some of the elements might be highly deformed. Now, since our geometry is fairly basic, it's easy for the program to break it up into a bunch of uh, elements of the same size. But in, but in order to check uh, the quality of the mesh, we go down here to quality. We press on the plus sign here. And when it says mesh metric, we press on none. And we press on the triangle to bring down the drop menu. And we can press on skewness here. Here it brings up the graph of all the different uh, uh, skewness of the elements. And if we press on the uh, yellow rectangle here, it will highlight all the uh, elements of the same skewness. So zero being a very low skewness. So we can see that that is the majority of our elements. And if we press on the next little uh, column here, we can see that that is pretty much sums up uh, the rest of our elements within our geometry. and Actually, I'll have you note that down here, I didn't realize that as I was talking about it, but down here we can see that it goes from a skewness of zero to a skewness of zero. So the uh, skewness of our, all of our elements within our geometry is super, super small that even Ansys uh, is not giving us the actual values for it. Checking uh, the mesh metric or the quality of the mesh is very important and should always be a good practice because sometimes you'll have a very complex geometry and it's hard for Ansys uh, to uh, break up the geometry in a whole bunch of different elements. So sometimes you will have uh, some very highly skewed elements uh, in your mesh, and that, this can sometimes lead to errors sometimes uh, when calculating the results for our simulation.